Alex Paul and Jess show us some clever Christmas cons in an hour on three. A pickpocket, Santa, inconceivable. That's the Real Hustle special after a bit of borstling, doggy style. Ten Stone Rocky guards his owner like a thuggish, jealous boyfriend. Rocky! You're a little f***ing put a wooden mouth watch and walk like this. Ellie is the collie who's wreaking havoc in the country. <laughs> you can see people thinking, well, why have you got such a horrible dog? And Biss is a Kelpie who scares the life out of his owners. No. He's controlling us and we're not controlling him. It's time for extreme measures. Dog Borstal. This is the last resort for bad dogs. Set up on a secure 10-acre compound in a remote part of the English countryside, Dog Borstal is run by three of Britain's toughest trainers. Your dog is a dog. It is not your child. Each trainer will take on one dog and attempt to reform them in just four days using their own individual training methods. Move your ass! It's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the problem. But to reform bad dogs, they need to tackle their owners. Give me any owner with any dog, and I'll find a technique that works. For these three dogs, the freedom to behave badly is about to come to an end. Rocky and Alicia have been together for two years, 10 months, and 19 days. It should have been a match made in heaven. Once upon a time, Rocky had the body of a prize fighter, but in the last few months, he started to let himself go. He's fat, he's greedy, and he's lazy. One, two, get in. Recently, he's developed a jealous streak. Rocky's determined that no one will get their hands on his bitch. He sees all men on the streets of Sunderland as potential sexual predators. And that includes pensions. No! And then they put a wooden melt watch and walk like this. But when he acts like that, you just can't enjoy him. There's no pleasure in it. Having seen off the competition outdoors, Rocky's now doing all he can to cramp Alicia's style indoors. With some men, he's fine. But if a guy was to get quite close to me, he doesn't particularly like it. Yes. You're not wrong, are you? Rocky! No! One evening after I'd been out, I came back with the guy that I was seeing. And when he seen me come in the house, um, he, he kind of ran up the stairs and he sat upstairs on the landing on guard so that nobody could go upstairs. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be without him, but I can't go on the way it's going on. Alicia wants her life back, so she's sending Rocky to Dog Borstal. And he's about to meet his match. His trainer this week will be ex-cop Mick Martin. He gets results through discipline and hard work, so fat rot Rocky is in for a tough week. Not afraid of the discipline, but press-ups. <laughs> Not too crossed on them, I don't suppose. Uh, I like rots. If it's the right shape, the right body weight, then you can do a lot of stuff. You know, I'll naturally guard, and because uh, that's what it was bred to do. Yeah, yeah, you're forceful. Sometimes they get bored and make their own games up, so we'll find out today. He's a big dog, isn't he? All dog Borstal inmates must pass a medical to prove they're fit enough for training. But fat boy Rocky isn't keen on exercise, and it's beginning to show. He is massive, isn't he? 64K, what do you think? I do think he's a big roti, but I do think he's also overweight. overweight. He is just a bit round looking. Little podgy. You little fatty. Are <laughs> you? Yes. You little fatty. If he lost maybe five kilos and Take just saw what he was like. Get him to 60, yeah. Yeah, get him to 60. All right. Yep. Okay. So fit for training? Yep, yep. <laughs> Rocky has just passed his medical, but Mick spots another problem. Your dog's almost the same body weight as you. The fact is their body weights are very similar. And let's face it, if she was in the park, and you were out there with your family playing with your little puppy, and that 
big oaf wanted to go over there. There's no way physically she could stop it. Next stop, the kennel block. Okay, so no, no, let's have a little look. Dog in! Good shout, mate. Yeah. This will be Rocky's home for the next four days. Straight out. Attempt to wait there. Rocky, wait. Good boy. And if you leave your kit. Next, Mick gives Alicia his welcome talk. We all, we all do different styles of training, so this is at my style. This is your manual. This is all about you. Right. This is all about your dog's behaviour. What you need to do is, you need to carry this bag all the time. So, and that means all the time. When you go to lunch, when you go to the toilet, when you go here, when you go there, I want you to take the bag all the time. Mick runs a tight ship, and failure to follow rules is certain to result in punishment. He's got to carry a backpack around with us 24 7, which is no harm done, I suppose. So, he'll be all right. I'm sure he will. I hope he will. People have preconceived ideas about rotties, don't they? You see that big fat running towards you across the football field, you're going to your pants. So, owners of dogs like that need to have more control than anybody else. And that's why I'm going to be harder on her than anybody. With the first inmate banged up, the next canine offender is heading for Borstal. The Jones family have opted for a peaceful, rural idyll in Hertfordshire. They've escaped the rat race and work from home. Their harmonious life is almost complete, but for one thing. Ellie is an 18-month-old border collie who's on the move from dawn till dusk, and she's turned the house upside down. We didn't know quite how boisterous border collies can be. Ellie's not just hyperactive, she's also bossy. It's uh, her place in the room, <laughs> and uh, we've all given in to that, really, haven't we? Yes, we have. Living with a highly strung bitch is taking its toll on every aspect of their life. You know, we are sort of wary if people come to the house. It's a major event to shut her away. You can't just, if people aren't particularly fond of dogs or like dogs, she has to stay shut away. As the Jones work from home, Ellie sometimes gets the boot. Come on, up. In you get. And if Brian has clients come to the house, he actually put her out in the car. You have to do what you have to do under the circumstances. That's what we resort to. But it's walking, Ellie, that's become a real pain. Ellie. Ellie. I've always had the ankle biting, and I've assumed it's a border collie thing, trying to round me up or a sign of excitement and pleasure. Ellie. And even the sight of another dog sends her over the edge. It's embarrassing for us because you can see people thinking, well, why have you got such a horrible dog? <laughs> it's time for manic bitch Ellie to learn some manners. She'll be brought to heel by tough-talking Lynn Davies. She spent years training bad dogs and is in no mood for being given the runaround. Well, she went to puppy classes yep. when she was a puppy, and she used to cause mayhem, but she'd just be having a go at all the other puppies. It looks like a typical collie to me, so really erratic, really um, fast-moving, you know, wants to know what everything that's going on. Ellie, stay. <laughs> Good girl. Having settled Ellie into her new home, Kinter discovers where she'll be staying. <laughs> well, it's very basic, isn't it? Not very... Uh... Not, doesn't look particularly inviting, but uh, this is home for a few days, so I'll get used to it. The final arrival at Dog Borstal is a Category A offender. Australian Kelpie Biss is not your average dog. Devoted owners Andy and Mel adore the longed-for addition to their family. I'll battle in his corner as though he is a child because he's part of the family. He has got a lovely nature underneath. It's just that so every so often it changes. And this can turn like a dog possessed. The eyes, the eyes change. Demon dogs. <laughs> and as in all good horror movies, 
It happens when least expected. If he's really wound up, then he throws a wobbler if you try and put the lead on. No, no, no. He's bullied Andy into submission, and now only Mel can handle him with confidence. And even he's finding it hard. Thank you. No. 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 This may be their baby, but he can be the devil incarnate. No. 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 Stop. He's controlling us and we're not controlling him at the moment. It's not as bad as some of them have had. They've tried everything, no. but Andy and Mel are running out of options for their little one. We just want to try and sort him so he's a bit more of a social person. This is heading to Borstal for a last-ditch attempt at redemption. He's about to go head-to-head -head with dog trainer Robert Allain, an expert in dog behavior with 20s experience under his belt. He specializes in the mad, bad, and dangerous to know. I uh, understand he's a bit of a delinquent. He um, bites a lot and doesn't like to be told what to do. And if people tell him what to do, he takes it very badly. Well, he's in for a bit of a shock this week, because I'm the daddy this week. Just go and put all your stuff in. It's straight to the kennel block for bad boy Biss. Is this yeah. all of his stuff? That, that's all his stuff. Dear God. Devoted owners Andy and Mel have brought Biss a few home comforts. What's it? The kennel in a bag. <laughs> What will they think of next? Okay. They think of this dog as their child. They adore him. Andrew said that, you know, it was really awful to see Biss in kennels. You know, Biss is really sad at being in the kennels. His face is really sad. And he was just anthropomorphizing and treating this dog like it's a child, and it's not. With Biss settled into his new accommodation, Robert wastes no time in getting to the heart of the matter. For owners Andy and Mel, it's straight to HQ. No, no. And how hard is he biting you there, Mel? Because it looks pretty bad. Jeez. Not great, is it? No, it's not good. No, that's not good at all. And obviously, there's a lot of potential for that to go seriously badly mm. wrong. You know, mm. particularly because they're not actually things where you're doing him anything unpleasant. No. What made you pick a Kelpie? Well, the dog we had before... Um, was thought it, of a Kelpie. Yes, it was a Kelpie mix. Mm. And he was just such a lovely dog. Mm -hmm. With a dog like Biss, from his breed, you need to be prepared to put in ten times more work than you might with your typical family pet lap dog. If you don't do that, he will make sure that you pay. And that's exactly what's happened here. With the dog safely locked up, the owners can finally settle into their barracks. Hello. Oh, hi. Andy. Andy, hello. Kinta, how are you? Pleased to meet you. A bit oh, stressed out. Huh? Thank you very much. I need this, yes. <laughs> While the others get to relax, Rocky's owner, Alicia, has to complete Mick's homework. At Borstal, everything runs to a tight schedule. And before lights out, all dogs must be taken on a mile-long walk. Uh, send number two down. Number one's just going in. Um, I just slide the gate over. Fatso, the largest dog in Suffolk. That's a stupid dog for a young girl to have on her own. Uh, Delta wants a kilo, one over. Yeah, go ahead. Why I'm worried though that Rotty's fitness isn't up to speed and I'm not going to be able to get as much out of him as I would like to. This is his, my first camping experience, and I'm just thinking, what's going to come in and visit us during the night? <laughs> I'm really very hopeful for Ellie that we can get a lot achieved within the next couple of days. Rocky, Ellie and Biss are about to face the toughest week of their lives. Rocky is charged with throwing his weight around. Rocky! There's no way she can physically overpower this dog. It's too big, it's too heavy, and it's too stupid. 
Ellie stands accused of being dangerously out of control. The problem is, smart dog, bored stiff. And this...